Quando saí lá da Bahia, minha terra. Hi, this is Sereia, and I'm here with Mestre Acordeon. Uh, Mestre Acordeon is one of the key fundamental uh, parts of Capoeira heritage. Uh, with over six decades of Capoeira experience, numerous DVDs, CDs, uh, he's one of the key promoters of Capoeira outside Brazil. Uh, author, philanthropist, teacher, musician. Uh, so it's a very big honor to be here with you, Mestre, today and to hear a little bit about yourself. I don't know if I agree with you, but it is a pleasure for me to be here and do something for you, for Capoeira. I, I feel very touched when I see people interested in Capoeira, history, traditions, what Capoeira is, etc. So, Thank you very much. Well, could you tell us a little bit about your story, who is Mestre Accordion, <laughs> a little bit about your work and what makes you proud of? I think that Mestre Accordion is me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sitting vice versa, so perhaps I am Mestre Accordion, I don't know. What do you want to, to know? I was born in Bahia. Salvador Bahia, a long time ago, 1943. And uh, the Bahia was a wonderful place 50 years ago. And it changed completely recently. But I, was, I grew up in that secluded paradise, mm -hmm. surrounded by a beautiful sea, green waters, warm. 85 degrees all year round. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. very good. And I was born in the surroundings of Salvador, not too far from downtown, but in a place in which, in the time that Salvador had the houses and everything in the top of the hills, and the valleys were just a jungle. And that's where I grew up, and what I see, one, one city, let's say, 80% African Brazilian, that, and that was one of the fortresses of it. lots of the manifest, cultural manifestations of Brazilian. Mm -hmm. right then, so, and I grew like that, and that Don Capoeira, there's a lot of change in my life, but predominantly is Capoeira. And uh, I did that, um, I had school, I grew up in, and uh, I was a student of Mr. Bean. This year, I'll make 60 years that I cross the steps of the school of Mr. Bean. Wow. And uh, since then, I have been around to the Capoeira, and have some school, strain, ups and downs, and all the trajectory that someone that decided to teach Capoeira passed. And then I, I decided that and did all the things in my life too, but always Capoeira was present. And I have been here in the United States for a long time. This year, I will make 40 years that I come in here. I cannot believe in that. Time and flies. I can't. It is uh, practically impossible. The life is moving so fast that I cannot catch up with. Well, you have done a lot of things for, uh, you know, for sure you are catching up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to be saying. I'm not taking an idea and more I'm going to do. Right now I have been dwelling with a film about the B2B. The project B2B was from Berkeley to Bahia by bicycle. And we filmed it too much. I had a plan and I needed to adapt to the reality. My plan was a journey of introspection. So I was to reevaluate myself, how I'm doing capoeira, how my life went, what I could do to improve, to be a better teacher or a better person. And then suddenly, uh, a whole bunch of people wants to come with me. And uh, we left uh, here with 29 people. 
But the first station of the metro, how much of it ever returned. But we went, and uh, eight of those who left, we arrived. So what I wanted to do that was this introspection was hijacked. <laughs> yes. you know, it's becoming one kind of a, a leader of a group, a kind of a father, a mess of capoeira, and uh, I don't want to say that was bad, it was so good, it was uh, Different amazing, <laughs> fantastic, extraordinary, but changing my concept what I wanted to do. So that five years from now, I decided to do from Bahia to Berkeley. Wow! What? <laughs> so when I left, it was to commemorate my 70 years. Huh? And now I'm 75. I wait five more years and I come from Bahia to here and then I can conclude this that story. That will be definitely something to look forward uh, yes, to. Yes, we saw how much capoeira is spread all over the Americas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was fantastic, mm -hmm. we had extraordinary reception in all the countries that I passed by. We had here in California nine capoeira events. In Mexico, we did so many workshops because the number of schools was great. Mm -hmm. Colombia was wonderful. Every place that we passed was extraordinary. And we see capoeira, uh, how capoeira is spread through the world and so on. And uh, that way of life of myself is very interesting because every day I look at the young people mm. doing capoeira. So sometimes when I look at the mirror, look at myself, so who is this guy? Because I always see these young people that use in capoeira all over the place. It is extraordinary. So my life has been to be a capoeirista that enjoy to play capoeira, to talk about capoeira, to have these students, to tell stories. That's it. There is much more in other areas, everything. So, but it's <clears throat> that's what I, I am more comfortable. Of course, there are much more areas, Mr. You were also the first one uh, to write a, a book, a capoeira book in English, and maybe that was something that uh, it was by default because you were living already here, but that's so important that people from other languages can have access to, to capoeira. I know, I did. I think that I was the first one to write about capoeira. And I, English in the language. Eh? So, and I did that for one reason to teach the movements of the capoeira. It's not too complicated. Eh? Uh, however, the cultural aspects, what we don't say, because the movements are the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. capoeira itself it is that. Eh, Thing extraordinary that you cannot say. The environment where capoeira has been thriving throughout so much time. And so I did the book in this direction to help my students to understand capoeira. Not uh, a cooking book or a recipe things. You need to do the movement this way or that way. You know. Well, Mr. is all of these all around that. Uh, makes one of the most famous capoeiristas in the world. Uh, regarding capoeira heritage, what do you think, especially that, what you said, the tip of the iceberg and then the rest, what do you think is important to pass from generation to generation about capoeira? What are the key focus? Uh, I also must tell you that I'm not a historian. <laughs> <laughs> I just read the books and I can't wait to have a or something like that. I have ideas and, uh, about the trajectory of the capoeira and I can see that there is a development. I think when you do not have movement 
swallow. We come back, we disappear. That's happening with many cultural expressions of the African Brazilians. Uh, some time ago, the uh, Radio Cultura from Bahia uh, recorded a series of uh, music from those manifestations. Dozens of that do not remember right now. And we do not have, we do not have Kishabira, you do not have more Ubumu around Salvador that used to be, we do not have more Matuks, Makulele um, was lost for a long time because they were not practicing capoeira. In some ways, could get the certain throughout the time. So, address changed. So, different uniforms, different uh, way of think, but this does not make capoeira spread and completely apart. Maybe so that you focus a little bit in some aspects of the capoeira, one way of interpreting, but um, the origin, the elements of the capoeira are still there. More recently, I see movements that uh, I'm not entirely ha happy with. It is like that uh, we want to focus on things that does not touch on the essence of the capoeira. For me, capoeira is one, one art that fundamentally helps you to learn how to learn capoeira. It is not just an European approach to teaching that you do everything very strictly and then you need to put your foot here and foot there and you do a better jump, a better haste, a better thing like that. I think that this is a little derivation of the capoeira, of that characteristic that this capoeira teach us. Mm. is a teaching method for the life, for the people to become more conscious of reality, more conscious about themselves, more um, with more self same with more self-respect in a lot of sense. That's the way that I think up with. And if you just want to focus and develop techniques, what, when I look uh, the internet and, and I see hundreds of teachers teaching this, teaching that, this is the same, then I feel that we are getting flat. The, the world is getting flat. So you will not see too much differences in the things. So the mechanism, the way of it doing is become the same. So when I teach Capoeira, what I would like the most is not to create everybody with, let's say, one genre that's the same, most efficient or more beautiful or I don't know. I think those things are a question of individual mm -hmm. people. So we cannot say that the yellow is more beautiful than green. Or we can say that the karate is better than box and box is better than capoeira, capoeira is better than this or that. Because those are preferences of the persons. Mm -hmm. You may like blue, I may like the yellow. And so, what is the better one? Mm -hmm. Blue or yellow? So, what is the best capoeira? It is play close to the ground or the play up? Is both more for the dancing aspects of the capoeira or more the size of the uh, self defense or fight or a little bit more um, challenge activity? So, each of us has a different point of view. You look at that in capoeira. And it, to me, 
The conservation of it, that openness of the capoeira to accept everybody, it is fantastic. So because we are changing society, we are changing the thinking of the people. We are changing not in the sense that you don't know you could be better, you have it. Today is politically correct, all this for me does not make sense. But also for you to become a better person, for you to have more respect for yourself, for you to have more respect for the other person, for you to be able to be created through one art that's so multidimensional as capoeira. And so capoeira, you wouldn't encapsulate it in sport, culture, folklore, how would you define it? It cannot be defined like that. So, as I say, it's something that uh, <clears throat> have a different uh, point, of view, point of view and approach. People that like sport will find it in capoeira. People that like just the dance, they will find it in capoeira. People that like the music, they will find it in capoeira. People that would like to fight, to be able to be a fighter, a warrior, because something that is coming from the nature yes. of the human being. What would you think, what's your opinion on the students that come and just want to focus in one aspect of capoeira, for example, the sport and movement, or they might just be interested in the music? How would this be approached by the teachers? Uh, <laughs> So, we, we, what can you do? All of us have the right to make choices in life. Someone wants to be more specialist, someone wants to be more generalist. Huh? One knows everything about nothing, the other knows nothing about everything. <laughs> That's <laughs> the way that the things go. So, if someone wants to use any aspect of the cup, there it is like. Of course, if someone decided to do everything, we'll try, you will not be as a specialist as someone that dedicated the time to one aspect. Mm -hmm. so we, I think that the teacher should not uh, uh, force anybody else one direction or the other. They, they need to say, look, this is Capoeira, that's what you do. That's the way that I do. If you like the way that I do, you say it to me. If you like the way to do different, then do different. Mm -hmm. There is not an absolute decisive way for you to teach capoeira, because capoeira is life. And there, there is a lot of the adjustment in and out with genre, mandinga, malice. This is the joy of life. A roda de capoeira is a metaphor for that. Everything that happens in life happens in the world. Only that the universe is more contained and the consequences of the mistakes are less dangerous. Mr. and I know there are many theories about capoeira origins and you just mentioned before you are not a historian, but from your research, uh, mm -hmm. what is your point of view? Can you tell us a little bit and how this evolved? Uh, at this point, uh, there is a lot of uh, ideas, and some ideas make sense, some other does not make sense. Uh, what I think that makes sense to me is that the all places in the diaspora path that is sense that represents the culture of the African that were enslaved at the time. Right? And those things influenced in many areas, in the food, in the way of the thing, in the, the char physical characteristics of the people itself. We know for sure that the capoeira is a, a derivation from that seeds. However, it's in another environment, she manifested a little bit different. But we, we talk about lancha. In Martinique, talk about uh, money in Cuba, in the United States, and something that uh, kicking in knocks. That there is similarity to the capoeira. But what we call capoeira is a result of uh, that uh, 
combination of the sayings of the, the roots of the capoeira and the sayings that were found here in Brazil. This is specific, it's not generic. Then that's what I think about. So, the story that the people came and did the idea, then compared with the different uh, uh, aspects of Brazil at the time, and think that I have heard everything about the origin of the capoeira, but nobody can prove anything. And the EU will have an idea, and I think that perhaps is good from a political point of view, but some uh, knowledgeable, rational point of view, we should not to impose uh, anything on the other person in terms of the education. You can say, I can say, this is my opinion, you have your opinion. This is my school, mm -hmm. and my school that you come with the uniform, but come and all the students to me, say, oh, that you never used the uniform before. You say, yes, but for a little while I haven't been used. I trained Capoeira without uniform, it was not in my time. I was in the street clothes and I went to the school. That's it. There was no uniform. I never saw Capoeira with uniform. This happened in 1970. What do you think of uniforms nowadays? I think that the uh, form side is good because you identify because the, the people uh, they, they get in, in one community and that community is the share of ideas and beliefs and whatever it is and you can have hundreds of communities to different approach but uh, it is in my point of view difficult to accept that we need to look at the thing as a whole and you can do everything you never will be a capoeirista that will be excellent in all the areas and you never should say that my my look is more beautiful or without the uniform I am not a capoeirista or that the uniform uh, is impeding me to do capoeira. Those are talks that uh, I do not uh, Agree. Mm -hmm. But we accept because everybody has the right to have their own opinion. Your opinion, I remember what my father told me. My father was an extraordinary man, too. And I never talked about my father or my parents or some teachers that were having all the areas that were wonderful people I was around. I, I had a lot of gifts in my life, including. Master Bimba, that was my teacher, in my only teacher in Capoeira. And, uh, uh, but my father, they said, my son, we, we live in a democracy, and all of us have the right to be stupid at your own taste. Decision. So you can think whatever you want, you have the right to do so. You should not be imposed. No, Capoeira is this, you need to do that, that. It is the foundation. What foundation? To use an atabac with ropes? This is like no sin. My time, atabac was not present in Capoeira. Principally because I was in Bahia. And the Bahia was a little lazy to get an atabac put in the back to <laughs> make around the street. The very miles already. Too heavy. In Pardera, a little better. Uh, Alma, even better. Capoeira has developed in many areas. Some things get extraordinary. The people run fast, the people jump high, the people go up in the space. So, uh, the, the parameter of the possibility of all human beings has been expanded tremendously. In all, every athletic area, in everything. So Capoeira also goes in that boat. Right? 
the movements to get fast and get more interesting. Uh, the specialization makes you to be more competent in one specific area. So you cannot do everything simultaneously, but you choose to go like that. So, but we will try and pose ideas. This is what I think. I think today we say, ah, oh, you have a, a Capoeira Regional Mestre Lima. I, I don't know. I don't do the Capoeira Regional of Mestre Lima exactly, because the Mestre had different moments that he had a different opinions, the ideas. I remember when I got to the school of Mestre, we had one, one way we do things, and um, my generation influenced in another direction. That keep it going. So and then we, I cannot say the capoeira of Mestre Bima. I need to go back in time. It's impossible. So we have today what you call capoeira regional contemporânea. But this contemporânea is not a style. It's just today's capoeira. Mm -hmm. So the same thing I tell this with the capoeira angola that you call capoeira angola today. The capoeira angola contemporânea. The Capoeira Angola that I see, that I played, that I, in my time in Bahia was not exactly what is done today. So there is a discourse, there is one philosophy, there is one perspective, there is a tendency, there is a bias. Because we do that so as a group in different areas, we uh, are adhering to areas that uh, we like the most. And what do you see other trends in Capoeira? Well, some contemporary trends. What do you see? Uh, some negative trends, some positive trends? What is negative and what is positive? That's the question. With Capoeira expansion, now recognized by the UNESCO, the Hoda of Capoeira, uh, nowadays, many federations, many competitions. Is there a risk that Capoeira is losing the essence, or do you see this expansion very positive? Don't put me in that situation. <laughs> to explain it takes a long time. You no, know? okay. The Capoeira is developing. The human being is developing. You know, we are, let's make a parenthesis here and let me tell you. Capoeira is not um, like uh, that medicine that heals everything. In reality, Capoeira it is one art that uh, is modified by the people that practice. So the moment, the society, the belief, the direction change the people and the people change what they do and they change the capoeira. It's not capoeira that guides you, it's you who guides capoeira. That's the reality. And then what capoeira happened today, it is progress, improve specialities, improve uh, uh, a span of the possibility goes in many areas, what you can do, you will defend your point of view. And your point of view could be completely different from mine. But I will defend a point of view, you will defend your point of view. I cannot tell that you are absolutely wrong, it's good or bad, because this is a value judgment. How can I make a, a value judgment what you think? The teacher in the school will tell their students what the teachers believe. That's the right. That's the right for that teacher. So you cannot uh, open everything and it is all oh, this become a mixture that there is no value. I don't think that it is. Sense that the CERN of the capoeira remain present. That's that I talking in the beginning of the same. What I feel that's not very positive to capoeira 
descaracterize the values ethnic and the ancestrality of capoeira. The way we see the life through the eyes of a culture that's not European. Okay? So you, you can go, for example, in judo, you go in the Asian, Asian point of view, you go in Greco Roman, it's another other thing. You go in boxes, and not the other thing. You go in capoeira, you need to have your us to the African culture in Brazil. To finish off, two more questions. One, I would like uh, you to share a message to the students that are starting with capoeira mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the second one, one advice to the people, to the capoeiristas that want to live from capoeira, what could you recommend them uh, to succeed? That's very simple. Practice. To both of them, students and teachers. Practice. <laughs> For the teacher, be patient and be receptive to the idea of everybody and try to construct your way of thinking and present capoeira now not as a truth above all but your opinion you have the right to have your opinion i have the right to have my opinion and all of us have the right to have our opinions we have people that agree with us and then you can just walk together but there is people that is in another direction and they have the right to do so great mr anything else that you would like to share before we finish off for today yes great please do <laughs> <laughs> deus é o maior e grande joão let's not forget o mestre joão grande de icon of the capoeira today, huh? he's 85 years old and has been doing capoeira throughout his life, beautiful capoeirist, beautiful person, beautiful character. And uh, he's getting the end of life and you have, we are doing this movement to help him, to tell him how much you will love him for his dedication to capoeira. And uh, I tell the new teachers and everybody, to have it. people who like it, message Juan Grant, to be an example of what to be a capitalist. Great. Thank you very much, Mestre, for opening your doors and your time. Thank you. I'm sure that this will be very Good. received. Now, for you, I would like to let you say this.